Hey guys, Jim Gavigan, Industrial Insight here. Hey, just wanted to finish out this video series on the data extract and some of the data analysis techniques we use. So today I wanna to specifically talk about the uh, integrator for business analytics from OSIsoft and how we extract data out of the Pi system using it. So looking at my screen, this is, a, this is one that I've showed you in some previous videos where we're actually doing overlay trends of certain events that are happening within the system that we're really interested in. These things happen repetitively, hopefully not, but <laughs> they do. And so what we're looking for is to see if there's a pattern and see if they exhibit some of the same behavior. And uh, actually the way that I, now I've done this analysis, it actually cuts the event off uh, when the operator reacts to a certain, you know, to when they think an event is about to happen, they actually cut some systems off. And so it actually cuts off some really interesting events. But, you know, regardless, this allows us to do some overlay trends. So if I'm looking at, say, cooking times or production runs or, you know, batches or something like that, you know, I can overlay these on top of each other. So how this gets created is out of an event view. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but also you can create asset views as well. And I'll link to the, the videos from OSIsoft on how to actually do that. This video is not to show you how it's done. It's more, okay, now that you've done it, now what do you do? And maybe even to think through some of the things that you might want or you know, I'm finding a few little things they've added in here that make our lives a lot easier from a, you know, a data cleanliness standpoint and or just in being able to analyze it. So one of the things I want to show, oops, let me hit the right thing. So one of the things that, that I have done uh, is I created something for their, their Pi system, their health of the Pi system. So I added... Uh, I don't know, 18 or so, you know, things that we're looking at on the Pi system. And one of the things that I, I, I kind of stumbled upon this while prepping for doing this video series is they've added some, some time constants or time uh, column things you can add here that may, you know, really enhance how you, how you understand your data. So so I'm going to talk about the asset view one first, then I'll switch over to the event view. But the asset view, one of the things that I was curious about is what kind of load happens on the Pi server by week of the year, by day of the week, you know, or even by month. So this way, I instead of having to go in my data, you know, whatever tool I'm using, whether it's Power BI, Tableau, or, or whatever, and I have to go create a new measure that you know, basically parses out those things, the integrator has this built in. So I can actually publish this as part of the view. So that can actually make my data analysis much quicker. So what I really want to go back to though, is I'm gonna go ahead and um, go back because there's no real changes here. Make sure, discard those changes, okay. So let's go to this event view here and I'm going to modify it. And one of the things we stumbled upon yesterday, I, I couldn't, I, unfortunately my customer had blown this view away and didn't realize, well, he did realize it and he told me, Hey, I blew away your view by accident. I was trying to show it to somebody and kind of messed up and I was able to recover it. But one of the things that I couldn't remember was how did I create the relative time uh, column? And what I had done was I had taken the timestamp now and subtracted it from the event start and got, you know, a timestamp, basically a time variable. And so like it would be zero or like zero, zero if, uh, you know, the timestamp was the same timestamp as the start. One minute later, it would give me a one or, or whatever. But what was really weird to me was in the graph, I'll show you here in a minute, it, was, it would show 12 a.m., 12.01 a.m., 12.02 a.m. That really wasn't reflective. I was actually showing these in relative time. That's zero minutes, one minute into the event, two minutes into the event, etc. And they actually, um, I, I was trying to figure out how I did that, and I stumbled upon this and was like, oh, wow, this is awesome. So I wanted to at least show this to you. So if you come in here and you add a column, add a time column, 
So if I look, I've added the event frame relative timestamp and the event frame relative time minute as well. So I actually have, have added some context to the column. So let's go back to my dadgummit. So let's go back to the uh, sheet that we were working on. And so if you look here, this 0, 20, 40, 60, that is minutes, whoops, sorry, minutes into the event frame. So to me, that's a lot more intuitive than if I saw 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., et cetera, you know, as it is trying to go through the event frame, which is what it showed before, uh, because I did not realize that that was the, the time frame. So if I look, what I've done is I put the the event frame relative time minute in there as my axis. So I thought that was a, a really, you know, nice little find. I, like I said, I just kind of stumbled upon it. You know, I, I had just done a, a new measure or a new column inside my data because you can do that. You know, the Power BI and Tableau and, and really all of the good BI tools have a way to create columns and, you know, do logic and do math on the columns. So that way you can create new measures. So this just prevented me from having to do that. So it helps me actually with, with scalability because it's not something I have to go do, you know, each and every time. So anyway, there's the, the comparisons um, in the event uh, view. All right, so let's say I want to create a line graph on, on my system. So let's just say I'm going to use the axis. I'm going to use the relative time minute because I want to do an overlay comparison. I want to take, let's say, this uh, temperature. Let's see. Let me find the actual temperature. All right. So that will be that value, okay, over time. So let me take the event as the legend. And let me make this the average of it. All right, so I can see what this temperature was doing on each event, right? So now they're all overlaid on top of each other. So I can see how they interact with each other, you know, for each particular event. So let's just say I want to create a slicer for that. And what I can do is create a slicer and drag that over as the event. And let me do a select all statement here. Right, so let's say I want to do a select all. Let's say I don't want to select any of them. Let's just say I want to select a couple of them. Right, so I'm just holding down my control key and you can see what they're doing for each particular event. So then that way I can do some comparisons and see if I see something in common, right? So that's kind of how we end up using, you know, the event frame uh, overlay trend and, and how we get the data all lined up. All right, so let's look at this other one that I had created on the Pi server. So let's let's kind of go back to a couple of things. So like, let's say I want to do an investigation. I want to look at what Pi loading is doing by day of the week, right? So let's say maybe I want to do that as a as a bar graph, a, a, a vertical bar graph. So let's do the axis, the day of the week. And let's do, let's see, how about the f archived events? How about that? All right, so now, you know, I can look at it and I have this weird anomaly on Thursday. Like what, what in the world's going on there? So I actually found this earlier, you know, as I was prepping, I was trying to figure this out. So let's just take the timestamp itself as my axis. Okay, and I'm going to make that as not a date hierarchy. And then I'm going to do this um, archived events, right? So I have this really big spike, you know, somewhere around the 28th. It, it looks like the 28th at 9 a.m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a slicer here for the uh, timestamp, right? So I'm going to kind of zoom in on the 28th and see what's going on here. Okay. All right. So now I can kind of see what's going on and it's really weird at 9 a.m. We, you know, processed what 48,000 events 
you know, at that particular point in time, which is really kind of odd. And I, I can't figure out what was going on. I don't know what, what was happening here. Um, somehow Pi system rode through it. So I guess that's good. But, you know, what if I, I say, okay, that is absolutely a, a filter that I just don't need to, you know, I, that's just an anomaly. I don't even want to deal with that. That's just, you know, kind of silly. Uh, so what I can do is, let's say I do the archived events as, let's just do this as a page level filter. And let's say I want to look at anything under say 1000, right? So now I've filtered that out and now I have probably a more realistic view, you know, of what's going on on a day by day basis. And, you know, I mean, I can put labels on, you know, things like that. So let's see, data labels, I'll turn those on. And let's see, I think I'll probably make this the average. So, so anyway, the average, you know, archived events per second, you know, it's pretty constant, it goes down a little on Wednesdays. But, you know, the thing is now I can, you know, kind of draw a picture of, of what's going on. And now if somebody wants to update this, to me, this is another really powerful tool. You know, as nobody has to go look at a spreadsheet, go refresh the data and, you know, looking at that is now I can just hit refresh and it goes out. That pie view is constantly publishing all the latest data. So if I, and, and I think I set this up for like every hour, you know, and I think I'm getting hourly values. So it's, you know, I just want kind of an overall big picture view of what's going on, you know, with the Pi server. So, you know, to me, the the business integrator uh, or the in integrator for business analytics kind of steps you up a notch. It gives you some ways to shape the data. You can clean the data. You can filter out, you know, certain values that you don't want. Like if if you know you don't want negative numbers or like, hey, I don't want this. You know, if it's a value over a thousand, I know it's bogus. You know, I can actually do some filtering actually with the integrator itself. So then that way I don't have to do a bunch of data cleanup, you know, after the fact, which obviously you can do, you know, with the tools you're using. But to me, I would rather do it at that data extraction layer. Let's not even pull it in where I've got to do the filtering. Let's filter it out before I ever get it and, you know, get realistic, good, solid data you know, that people can actually use and, and, and make some decisions on. So for me, this is kind of the, the, the latest evolution here. And, and this is really, you know, I, I really see um, streaming, you know, analytics like this or having things, you know, published where you can just ad hoc, go get it. To me, I see so many customers, they're still printing reports out. I, I saw a thread on Pi Square not that long ago that, Somebody wants to print out a process book screen at a certain day every time. Why? Well, the reason is, is because they want to take it to their production meeting every morning. And people print this thing out and bring it to the production meeting at different times. And they scribble some notes on it and nobody's looking at the same data. And I'm like, well, think about, you know, what it is you're really trying to accomplish in that meeting and let's get everybody on the same page. Let's not print out a static view of what our process was doing at a certain moment in time. Let's have everything we want to know about our process available to us where we can start asking questions of the data. You know, because uh, I probably need to do another uh, thing on just Power BI and Tableau. Like Power BI has really added a lot of things with natural language where you can just type questions in. And so I really see the, the plan of the future. We're, we're going to be, you know, asking questions through, you know, voice commands, just like we do in our personal life, you know, or typing in questions that we want. We're not going to necessarily have to do things this way. I mean, this is still going to be, you know, handy, but to me, what I really believe, you know, you're going to see is people are going to ask questions of the data. So instead of taking out these snapshots, printing out stuff, you know, as we come into the morning meeting, this is our report. All right, guys, let's refresh it. We haven't refreshed it since yesterday. Boom. Now we have all the latest data. You know, what are our problems? What are issues that we're seeing that we need to deal with right now? Let's go ask the questions. Let's go slice through the data and let's let's get to the answers we need instead of people going off and saying, well, I'll go research that because I don't know. I don't have all the data in front of me right now. So anyway, the, these are the kind of things that I, I really see coming. And, and I wanted to give you a little glimpse into how we go about, 
you know, building the tools and where we think about the delineation of, do I just use some ad hoc, you know, data queries and a, and a once, you know, a one-time report that we're trying to figure out something that's going on in the plant? Or, you know, is this something that's sustainable that every morning meeting we're going to be talking about? The, the data extraction tools are very different. And I think for some of the, you know, uh, tools like machine learning and Simca, you know, which is a multivariate data analysis tool, which is in that same category as machine learning or any of the AI stuff you're, you think you might want to do, I think we're going to have to stream data from the Pi system or whatever our data collection tool is, or maybe several, you know, data engines are going to have to feed those models. And I think that'll be streaming. I, I don't think we're, you know, we're going to be doing manual ax extracts long term with that. We're eventually going to figure out the right model and then we're going to live feed that data to let those models and those tools tell us what's going on. So anyway, before we get there, we have to prove the value. We have to understand, you know, our data. We have to do these analyses so that, you know, our management teams get on board and they're like, wow, this is really powerful. Now, how do we take it to the next step and to the next step and to the next step? So hopefully you've get, I've given you a little window into that, into that future and kind of what we're doing now and, and how we make those decisions. So hopefully you enjoyed the series. And uh, as always, you can contact me and come to the industrialinsightinc.com website. You know, look, look at, you know, the blogs we post, you know, some of the services we do. You can hit me up on, uh, you, can, you can actually email me through that. You can comment on the YouTube channel, LinkedIn feed, whatever. You know, if you have comments, questions, please, you know, reach out to me. I'm, you know, we'd love to do business with you. But if you just want to ask us questions, don't feel like, you know, we're not going to answer you just because, you know, we're not, you're not a customer or maybe even you're a competitor or maybe, you know, you're in a completely different business. You know, we, we want to help this community grow and, you know, we want to educate people on what's possible. So we think if we do that, everyone's going to be better off. All right. So thanks again for watching and appreciate it. And let me know what you want to see next. And if you like what we do, subscribe to, and, and get notifications uh, of our YouTube videos going out. I, we would be absolutely honored if you, if you guys did that. So thanks again. Take care.